I can't believe this is actually happening. I can't believe the walls are actually coming down. The walls that once kept us safe, the walls that were once the only thing between us and complete annihilation, now represents that very same annihilation for other people. And it just looks so damn cool. <laughs> Gary's like, what the hell did I do? Yes, welcome to Aaron Radio. Stuff just got real. I'm so sorry, I thought that was... <laughs> Picks his last episode in Stratus, which is the most sad mistake I possibly could have made for a character. There she is. Long time no see. He's become the the devil, the demon. Rumbling, rumbling. It's already here. <laughs> it's coming for you, everyone, children. I was sent this great video or great concept for a video where it was like the events of the last couple episodes in real time. Basically from their perspective, Gabby fires the shot and then there are a couple of seconds or maybe milliseconds where Aaron's head is just floating through the air and then next thing you know the rumbling begins and the walls come down and there's colossal titans everywhere. From an outside perspective, it's almost as if Gabby brought down the walls with a bullet. Biggest assassination backfire in media history. But God, is it exciting. It's also kind of cool for me to think that this is very Eren. I mean, this is like season one Eren who was so frustrated by being a captive and didn't believe in the safety of the walls. It's so perfect that he's the one to bring them down. Thaw. Time for Eren to melt our icy hearts with stomping. <laughs> yeah, I imagine you'll have a lot of questions. Mr. Leonhart. Why did it not occur to me that he might still be alive? Does that mean any soon? Right, they all know. All the Eldians and Marley know what's coming for them. But what about them? They're Eldians too, no? Do they get spared? Probably not. If he's with Jean and Connie, he'll be alright. They're all probably standing around shoulder patting each other, if I know Connie. And Reiner's been talking about this for a while, too. Reiner just cannot rest. Right. The, wow. Yeah, what do you even do? <laughs> My god, the stones on this girl. <laughs> Gabby's not the giving up type. Mikasa looks somewhat resigned to it. I don't think that's how that works exactly, but... That's one of the really bizarre things about this, is that the Marleyan philosophy, or I guess the world's philosophy when it comes to Eldians, is just evil but they're not going to see that. Most of them are never going to reflect on that. Nothing is really changing fundamentally, except for their existences. Because in their minds, everything they ever said and thought was right. They labeled the Eldians as devils, and Eren literally became a devil. And in that sense, very directly creating what they're most afraid of. Well, I strongly feel like this is way too far a course of action. It is, in a sense, them reaping what they sowed. Like, you treat people like monsters long enough, then they're going to become monsters. The tragedy of it is the innocence that will die because of them. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that conversation pretty much nails it. Like, it's not all on them, but this is just way too much. That cart conversation. It's a lot of weight to bear. Right, but we're not safe. <laughs> I was talking about how he's safe in their hands. It took a dark turn. Ooh. Oh no! Oh no! I was about to say Connie... Connie wouldn't do that, but no. Connie has other plans. Connie looks so different suddenly. Oh, she's still sitting there in the house? She's just been chilling on the roof this whole time? Ah, oh, Connie. Connie, stop. It hurts me to see them squabbling. Oh no! Oh no, he's taking up with Falco. What do you even do? There's just so much to do. I'm looking at you, Mikasa. Elena's this whole world is coming crashing down. She was riding that high. Here we are again, cowering inside buildings. This looks very familiar. Oh 
no! She took herself out! Oh no, Mr. Browse, get out of there! I'm so overwhelmed. There's so much happening. Oh no! Who was it? Oh my god! Hell yeah! Oh my god, this is so amazing. Get him! <laughs> yes! Holy crap. Oh my god. Damn. Ah, it's really satisfying. As I was watching that scene, I'm getting like flashes of that, the conversation where Sasha's father, while dealing with the loss of his daughter, has the heart and the presence of mind to stop Kaya from killing Gabby, and then gave that speech, which is what I feel is one of the most important moments of the show. Because finally, after all this time, in all the darkness that is Attack on Titan in the early seasons, we finally have a glimmer of light, you know, someone who can sort of see through the, the immediate terribleness of their circumstances, and can find something beautiful and worthy of protecting, and in there, a higher purpose for living, that carries a greater responsibility, and isn't this exact thing that's causing this destruction, where it's like, because of the terribleness of the world, because of all the pain and suffering, because of the inherent unfairness of circumstance, and because of the immense capacity of human beings for evil, I have no other choice but to engage in this and play this very same game. I think that scene in his speech doesn't require a good result, because in that moment he has a clarity and a strength of character that I feel is its own reward. For me, speaking of freedom, that's freedom. You know, freedom is the ability to make your character and your inner world a self-generating thing that is incorruptible. But that being said, it's so satisfying to see that it actually does have an effect in a way that's tangible. I mean, I think there are always effects, but this is very, like, very narratively satisfying. And then to have Sasha be the image that Gabby ends up representing, I feel like it pays really great homage to Sasha as well, and ties so nicely together with one of my favorite themes of the show, which is that you find something transcendent in recognizing that there's a high chance that you're going to lose, but nevertheless, you do your best to carry the torch, and in doing so, you honor the legacy of the past and pave the way for a better future, even if it means your own personal sacrifice. And it's not to say there isn't truth to that, and it's not to say that there isn't evil in the world, and it's not to say that circumstances can't be horrible and oppressive, but there's another game as well, you know? You can't win the game of circumstances. And even if we can, you know, even if we're like these one in a million figures who actually can capture a moment and, and create really large change, there's still another element that has to underlie that and is also available to everyone now, which is the search to complete one's own arc, to find what you are and what you believe independent of circumstance. Like who are you at its core? Who are you without any pressure or influence from others or opportunism for your own benefit? And what do you actually believe? And where are your lines? And then finding enough value in that word, that is a reward that transcends anything that could happen circumstantially. I believe that that exists, and I feel like the greatest arcs happen for people who find that. That's what makes Erwin such a satisfying character to me. He finds exactly who he is and what he stands for, and therefore he's willing to sacrifice everything, including his own life, because he's arrived at that purest ideal. Sasha's father, while he's not leading any one-armed military charges, has that same strength, and I believe that even though that's its own reward, it ends up having rewards, it ends up having consequences, because if everyone were to live that way, the less of that there is in the world, and I feel like the scales shift really quickly. I feel like it's a very narrow margin between prosperity and total annihilation because most people typically are just going to follow. Most people are going to follow the sentiment and it doesn't take that many people to shift that majority to the point where that's leading the society. I feel like when it's done right, you know, when there's a moment of actual realization like that, it transcends the rest. Like this world is about to be brought to its knees, but that moment in itself captured something of true beauty that's incorruptible to me. And that I think, even though it's hard to explain, is the thing to look for in moments of absolute despair. It's that self-generating thing. Anyway, <laughs> Gun title card. It's powerful enough to bring down a titan, but its utility is questionable. I don't know, I got a lot of utility out of it just now. I had an arc I needed to complete. And also to rescue Falco. <laughs> stop. S you stop it. Please let them make it out of this. This is, it's not the time, honestly. Like, you have much more colossal problems. Oh, thank God. It could have gone another way, and I'm grateful it didn't. Don't take anything for granted in this show. Even in the total annihilation and destruction and chaos of the world, there are still things to hope for. The noise must be insane. You're just constantly hearing these colossal titans stomping around. I mean, we all got it in us. Do you know who the real enemy is? Exactly. 
Let's do the best you can for now. <laughs> yeah, works for me. <laughs> oh my god. Shadis, I'm so sorry. I forgot your name last episode. I'm so sorry. You are special. Remember when Shadis thought he was nothing? Still showing up. Yes. Elena doesn't know what to do with herself right now. She's at a loss. It was a very suggestive <laughs> type pose. <laughs> Not since Annie. It's another day in the Survey Corps. Corps. <laughs> We're right back here. But we're not the same people anymore. This is reminiscent of that group attack. Their first turnaround in season one when they came together. <laughs> God, it's so amazing. I can't believe it. This is such a payoff for everything that's come before. <laughs> this music. <laughs> oh no, is that Pixis? He's not out to get you, he just wants some alcohol. Throw him a flask, he'll go away. Armin takes him out. Pixis saved Armin's life back in season one too. <laughs> Look at Shadis! I love it! Alright, it's not like a cocky. Let's not get- oh, okay. Man, they're crushing it right now. That was one of the most satisfying action scenes I've ever seen in my entire life. You might want to have a seat for this. Flish Flush, he lives. <laughs> little icy there. Is that on orders from Aaron, I wonder? The whole thing was obviously just a, an alliance of convenience. So am I. Yeah, Connie, Connie. In all the craziness of this episode, I forgot about that choice. It hurts me because I feel like Connie has always been one of the most grounded in his way. I don't know what this is, but it's not a shoulder pat. In that scene with Connie where they sort of faced off, you can tell immediately that Armin is sort of not on strong footing because one, it's really easy to tell Connie his mom's life isn't worth the sacrifice. And two, Armin himself, as Connie pointed out, was brought back to life by a similar sacrifice. This is a really complicated thing and I don't know how to get around it, but well, I feel like generally speaking, no emotions are wrong. No feelings are wrong. I feel like there has to be something else that decisions are grounded to. But that's a really, really difficult thing to contend with. And I feel like most people will get out of the way and be sort of defanged by the fact that somebody has more emotional stakes to the decision. But those are the most important fights to be had in a lot of cases. And I think maybe a solution lies in separating. Connie's feelings at that moment are valid and important. And I mean, it was chaos and there was no time, but I feel like addressing that first might have given him some pause. Instead, it became this debate between consequences and Connie's heart. And those two things are incompatible in conversation. People will go there a lot. You know, it's like, you don't know what I've been through. And that's true. Walk a mile in someone's shoes, right? But it can't end there because it's a slippery slope if one's feelings about something are the sole determinant in the right course of action because anyone can feel deeply about any course of action, whether or not it's actually sound decision making. Yeah, she's got those tiny little chicken legs. I had no idea. Yeah, that's that would solve a lot of Problems, you'd think? That's a reasonable idea. What about Armin in his colossal form? Oh! Of course! Annie! <gasps> Annie's back! Annie's got a lot of catching up to do on plot events. Can you imagine trying to explain that to her? Everything that's transpired, this is such a, a bizarre yet stunning episode. I think Gabby's rescue of Kaya takes one of the top spots in my mind for greatest moments in the show. It's part of a larger thing for me this episode, and I guess this season, and I guess since season three perhaps, where things are going so terribly, and everything is so awful, and things are apocalyptic, yet I end the episode feeling hopeful. What is that? I can't 
fully articulate it or put my finger on it, but I think in there is something essential to the show and is partly part of this ongoing answer to the question of what do you do with the fact that life is cruel? I can't help but focus on the other aspect of that, articulated by Mikasa actually really early on in season one, where it's also beautiful. I guess particular to the way I look at it is the idea that the cruelty and the beauty exist simultaneously, but sort of in separate areas, if that makes sense. Like the cruelty is found largely in the uncontrollable, you know, in the massiveness of the universe and material and events and chaos, things that compared to which we're just tiny, insignificant specks of nothing that are going to be crushed and annihilated. But then the beauty lies in humanity, or specifically, because there's a lot of cruelty in humans too, the ability of humans to be conscious enough to find something akin to self-realization that has a power that is independent of those other things. You know, it's within one's own grasp to articulate how one views the world and where we fit into it and where our core is. And I think it's really hard to get there and it's hard to stay there, but the moments when that is hit transcend the rest. They serve as sort of these timeless moments where for one second or one instance, you have the strength to free yourself from the tyranny of the cruelty and create a moment of goodness, to create a moment of beauty. And if you look at someone's life as something that will forever exist at that moment in time, you've in a sense, created an eternal moment of beauty that will very likely, I believe, ripple out into all of human existence, even if the results of that are not as traceable as what they are in media. Like for example, Gabby using her second or third or fourth chance at life to do something good and honor the legacy of people that have given her that opportunity. And looking at it that way, I feel like there is a course of action. It's just not satisfying in the way that a lot of people like to think about it. And it's not satisfying in the way someone like Aaron would think about it or Zeke would think about it, where the answer is you don't know what will happen. You don't know if you can affect any change in a meaningful way. You don't know if you can stop this apocalypse from happening. It's out of your hands. At least it's out of your hands as a lone individual. But in each moment, you can make the best choice you know how to make. And the more in line with your own realized ideals it is, the better. And you just take it one moment at a time and you let that instinct be the guiding force all the way you take joy in that and let that be the reward and let that give you the strength to face each thing as it comes and you trust that that is for the good and in the end i believe that even if there is massive tragedy there will be something beautiful left because of people like that in a sense one's realizing of oneself is the best result you can hope for it's the only thing you have full control over so truly Stunning episode, on par and surpassing all my wildest expectations again. <laughs> so that is the end of Attack on Titan final, final, maybe season four, episode 22. Before the video ends, I have to give a very special thank you to all my patrons for all the support. It's been a little hectic starting two new shows while doing Attack on Titan, but thank you for the support and making this all possible. Shout out to those who joined the top tier on Patreon recently. Hemingway Guinea Pig, Audrey, Total Boy Gaming, Isaac Hernandez, Haslay, Jesse H, Angel Diaz Arias, and Crespar. Thank you to you. Thank you to all my patrons again for all the support. And thank you to everybody for watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, debating. <laughs> sharing your amazing thoughts. Really appreciate it. This is what I live for. Love you guys, and I'll see you very soon for whatever's next on the schedule.